Welcome back to Down Deck Circle Podcast. I am your very well dapper. dressed in my cable knit sweater this evening. Looking oh, dapper. Nick Zanaboni, also known as Nick Z, for those that tune in each week, which is about 15 ish of you, but sometimes we get some more, which is great. Um, Jason, how the, how the heck are you today, buddy? I'm good, man. I'm good. Um, some big news over the week. Yeah, we got a trade to talk about here. Um, baseball. Some stuff's actually happening. But we still have a, a big, big surplus of free agents on the market still, which is kind of too shocking. many. Too many. Jason, there's some big news that I'm going to touch on now. It's going to it has to do with my cold open question of the week. I don't know if you saw, but Netflix oh. is doing a full season do- documentary about my Boston Red Sox. What needs to happen for you as a Cubs fan to watch? this Red Sox thing each week on Netflix. Ready, set, go. Jason, we all know that I'm going to tune in each week. Yep. Sometimes begrudgingly, but just because it's the Sox, I have to. But what's it going to take for you to tune in? I don't think much. I mean, this is like this is kind of exciting as a baseball fan. I mean, I know I don't know about you, but they're kind of trying to you know mimic Hard Knocks. I think okay. right, like they're trying to like and no offense, but I think they may have been able to pick a little bit more of an exciting club. Yeah. Not sure why Boston was picked for this, but I'm all about getting like a behind the scenes look on franchises. Um, I just can't get enough of it. I know, like recently, I think everyone's like that because they've now come out with like Hard Knocks in season as well as Hard Knocks yep. spring training. Yep. So I'm all about this. The only thing that kind of sucks, I think we have to wait till 2025 probably to watch it. I don't know, man, because it is kind of – if it's like a weekly thing, that's kind of what they did with the in-season hard knocks. Right. I'm not sure what the thing's going to – what it's going to be. And also announced with this was a new documentary about the 04 team, which is going to be 20 years, which is actually crazy that, like, yeah, already been that long just because that's such, like, a core memory for me. But, yeah, I'm more excited about the new stuff just because, like, again – these things we love. Uh, did you watch quarterbacks? On I did. Netflix? I like, did. So they follow yep. like, and they're actually doing an NBA one now with Jason Tatum and a few other guys. So these, like, this is what us fans love to see because it makes us feel like we're like in the know. And yep. I'm pumped no matter what. I figured you would also be pumped because you're a baseball guy. But I think, I think Tristan Cassis is gonna become. Oh like, yeah, it's a good call. A mega, a mega star. He's gonna. He paints his nails, cool, whatever. He's very like. Um, he he lays shirtless in the outfield before games. He's. I I think he's gonna be like a star after this, and I'm and I'm excited for that just because it's it's not often that you see a a homegrown. Red Sox player, real. I I couldn't even tell you the last homegrown like super superstar we've had. And like Devers is great, but like Devers isn't gonna show up on camera like Cassis is going to. So I'm very excited for that. Yeah, good call. And I think Cassis definitely has that like personality yeah. and persona to like stand out and become like be put in. You know, there's always like a one or two players in these shows that just like mm-hmm. stand out and become like fan favorites. And yep. I think he's going to become like a nationwide favorite. Whereas yes. like people in Boston already love Cassis. Yeah. Um, he's going to be one of those nationwide. He's got the, all the makings of that for sure. It'll be Mike uh, I can't wait for the it. ESPN games. It'll, it'll be good. I'm a, yeah. I'm a I, I, I hope, I hope you're right. I hope they do make it like a weekly in season show. Um, that's, that would be awesome. Cause that's, that's what we need is like, um, 
it's cool. Don't be wrong, but I, I don't want to wait till 2025. I want to see it in the now. I don't want to see like outdated storylines. And I think if they follow that hard knocks persona, that's what they should do. Cause even hard knocks spring training, it comes out on that, that following yeah, week. week. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that, I, that's, that's a good call. I, I can't, I'm excited about those. That was, that was some big news um, this week. Another big news that happened this week was we had a trade. Or actually, before we get into that, let me take care of the business up at the front end here. Do you want to get access to the most accurate fantasy baseball rankings? I know I do. This is our according to fantasy pros. We are the most accurate. Um, you can get draft cheat sheets, draft cheat sheets. Let me pronounce it a little bit better. DFS betting projections. Custom league advice on our Discord, and we can get all that and more by signing up to become an all access member today at fantasy6pack.net forward slash plans. And right now, we have if you use promo code F6PMLB24, you get 15% off that membership. So, right now is a great time to sign up. Leagues are starting up soon. Get access to that. The cheat sheet's huge. I know I've used that in the past, it does a really good job of like you know finding a little bit of um, advantages at positions and things like that. So, Definitely get it signed up for that for sure. You can do that at fantasy6pack.net forward slash plans. That's the business side of things. Now let's get into the news besides the Netflix announcement. Big one going down. We still have free agents available. And the orders are like, that's okay. We're going to trade for one of the top market, or sorry, pitching, pitching uh, players on the market in Corbin Burns. And looking at this trade, <laughs> the Orioles made out like bandits mm -hmm. um going back to milwaukee is dl hall and there was somebody else joey ortiz that's right which both good prospects Five. you're talking about corbin burns who's been arguably one of the best pitchers the last three years combined mm -hmm. you know three straight seasons of 200 plus strikeouts um we had this debate in the discord which is another reason why you should sign up do you think this – does this hinder Corbin Burns' value at all by going from the NL Central to the AL East? Um, I don't – I think if it wasn't Corbin Burns, maybe. But, like, Corbin Burns is a top five pitcher in baseball right now. Maybe you yeah. might be able to, like, stretch it to, like, eight, but whatever. I feel like the top eight could easily all be, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But um, no, I think he's going to be a stud. I, I'm not, I mean, if anything, don't love the park, but I'm not going to not. If it's like, I'm trying to think of like another pitcher, like a tier, like a Joey Ryan tier of a pitcher, a good pitcher. But like in a, in like in Baltimore, I might ding him just because it is the AL East. But I mean, he gets to play the Red Sox a bunch and they stink at least on paper. So um, I'm pumped for Burns. He's someone that I can – I think I'm going to be an Orioles fan. I think that's going to be my team if because, one, ownership of the Red Sox does not care. Two, I have family that lives in Baltimore area, so I'll be able to go to some games. So I think just the O's are going to be my team. So uh, go Corbin Burns. So, again, I – I was under the premise that I think it was a little bit of a, a just a slight tick down going to the AL East, having to face the Yankees, mm -hmm. the Rays, um, things like that, instead of like the Pirates and um, even the Cubs to an extent. Mm -hmm. um, but um, in the Discord, it was brought up that he actually has only a 200 average against when facing the AL East. It's obviously a lot smaller sample size, but a little bit of a outlier there, um, you know. He's had success against the AL East, so that's a little bit of an uptick for him there. Right now, Fantrax has him projected for pretty much what he did last year, and that's right around 190-plus innings pitched. Um, let's see. Strikeouts, again, right around that same thing, around 200 exactly, 206 they have him, um, with a 3-4-6 ERA. Are you taking the over or under on any of those? It's probably did, did you say three four for an ERA? Yeah, three four six. He did he did have a little bit of a digression last year, just to put it in hindsight. The K rate went down last year. The, the ERA went back up. 
he What's was up? doing that on on purpose. Corbin. Burns. Yeah, that, that this was, was yeah, this is uh so so this um, is what he got. Remember, this was like this was like uh this was your uh theory, right? He was pitching um, himself out of the out of the Baltimore or sorry the uh, Milwaukee system after they yeah. wouldn't give him a, an extension. You know what? I know this isn't our award show. Corbin Burns, Cy Young. Boom. Ooh. Book it. I like it. I like it. I, I think I to me, I think the ERA stays around that same three and a half. Again, we're going to the AL East, right? So he's gonna give up. I don't think that I think that's sub three ERAs in the past. Um, but I think he gets back into like the two twenty plus strikeouts, which is not a yeah. huge, not a huge over since they haven't projected at two oh six, but I could easily see back up over the two twenty, two twenty five uh mark for um Corbin Burns. But I think it was a steal. They've actually fleeced the Brewers. But again, we've seen it before. The Brewers, I think, wanted out from Corbin Burns. I'm not sure why. Yeah, I think they just didn't want to pay him. They just didn't want to pay him. A um, little bit of a smaller market. They've got some pitching prospects coming up that pipeline. Um, we, 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 we talked about it last year in the, uh, in, in the spring training when they you know didn't, get, didn't offer him that extension. So mm-hmm. they finally got his way out of, uh, out of Milwaukee. That was the news for the week for now. So this week we're going to talk about Three players each, so top six. We'll get, we'll say, I wouldn't say top six, we'll just say six players that we are like planting our flag or saying that you must own for dynasty baseball. That's one it's pitcher, off season. yes, one pitcher, one hitter, one prospect for your dynasty league to must have or somehow acquire. Um, one, one pitcher player, sorry, pitcher, hitter, prospect for each. That's six total. We'll start with everyone's favorite <laughs> pitchers first, and it wouldn't be an on deck circle if we, Nick wasn't talking about the, a Red Sox player. So I'll let you go first. Talk about your pitcher, Nick Pavetta of the Boston Red Sox. All right, I'm sure everyone that's listening, watching, whatever. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to talk about a Red Sox pitcher, you're going to be like, "Oh, it's going to be Brian Brian Bayo." No, no, I'm going to talk to you about my namesake, Nick Pavetta. Jason, I'm going to throw out some st- stats for you. I like that. If I told you that eh, since the second half of last season, so the middle of June, okay, he was first in K percentage, first in K to walk per- percentage, third in average, fourth in whip, five in swinging strike, and 15th in ERA, 14th in FIP. And you guys know I'm not a FIP guy. I'm not an ex-FIP guy. But these numbers, I'm not, again, this is going to be me saying Nick Pavetta is not going to be your SP1. But this is a perfect example of those pitchers that you can draft so late in drafts. Nick Nick Pavetta in like a 12-team league, a redraft, is not getting drafted. Like, unless you're like in the Boston area and you're like, Okay, I just want to get a Red Sox pitcher. I'll pick Pavetta at the end. But he's someone that you can get so late in drafts and your your ROI is going to be huge. If he's your SP3, like that, you could be absolutely golden. And I'm just excited about having someone like Pavetta because he's also like a guy that like he shows emotion on the mound. He plays with some balls. And yeah, he's he's my guy ish for this like bottom ish tier of pitchers. Would I would I rather Corbin Burns, Jason? Yes. Would I rather Kevin Gozman? Yes. But I'm trying to find those guys that are really like latent drafts that you can just draft, set it and forget it, and be like, okay, I'm gonna live with Nick Nick Pavetta. There's gonna be a start where he might only go five innings and give up four runs, but like he might give you nine and two as well. So. He's someone that I'm excited about this season and moving forward, honestly. I am bummed, though. I traded him in a dynasty league straight up for Jake Berger just because I needed a bat. But Mm -hmm. I think Pavetta is definitely going to show out this season. I mean, in hindsight, that's actually not an awful trade. Um, Jake Berger had a great 2023, and so did Pavetta. Um, You know, last few years, most particularly his second half of of last year, he really – um, you know, turned a corner. Um, he was really doing really well after the All Star break last year. And the month of September was huge. Um, probably one of his best months he's had as a pitcher, mm-hmm. at least in the last, at least with Boston. 
Um, he, you know, he, he was just shy of 200 strikeouts last year. So he's on track again for probably, you know, that's three straight years of 175 or more strikeouts. And um, he was even out of the bull, bullpen last year for a period of time. Like, yeah. So again, if we can just see him consistently start for this team every five, every five games and just show what he showed last season, I think he's going to be a stud. Yeah. And like you said, I mean, it's not like, you know, these are names that, you know, people are like, well, what are you talking about? You need to own these players. Well, we're not going to come on here as a dynasty podcast and tell you, you know, everyone knows that you need to own Corbin Burns and, and Garrett Cole, right? Like we're trying to find out, find some guys that you may not think about as must own players. Um, so that's why I think Nick Pavetta is a very good call out. Um, he's a pitcher that you're basically getting for free at the end of startups um, or, you know, at the bottom uh, of a trade or some sort of throwing for a trade. Like again, like a Jake Berger, you can trade him for um, things like that. So Definitely a good player. That it's also going to you know eat innings for you um, if you have any minimums and stuff like that. So another great uh, great call for a uh, lower tier pitcher to have. My guy's going to be uh, Ryan Pipiot Pipio. I, I, I was wondering how you were going to say his name. <laughs> just because I call him Pep Pepoit, but I don't Pepoit? know. How okay, I like that. I like that. Um, I Let's feel like <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, Joe stopping in here to say what's up. What's up, Joe? Glad you can join us. So uh, there's a few reasons why I feel like Ryan is a good uh, <laughs> is a good pitcher to own. Um, I think one of the things most I think most notably is he was just acquired by the Tampa Bay Rays. However, <laughs> with a little bit of caution in the wind, uh, throwing caution in the wind is. Tampa Bay has a knack for getting their starting pitchers injured and injured often. Um, and a lot of that is because what they do there in Tampa is like, hey, they find a pitch that is very successful and they tell you to throw your pitch. That Whatever successful pitch that is, throw it more. Throw it to the point where we don't want, even if it's fastball or, or whatever that pitch is that, you, that you, they have found that they're successful in, throw that a lot. So that's a little bit of caution with Ryan PPL going forward. But anytime you can get a Tampa Bay pitcher, um, one that they're looking to acquire, um, I think he's going to set up for a huge – Jeffrey Springs last year, right? Mm -hmm. Started off the season super hot, obviously then got hurt. But we're not going to talk about that. But anytime Tampa Bay acquires a player, your ear should perk up and say, why is – I know they're trying to get out from class now, but they identified – Ryan is one of the guys that they wanted in return. Um, again, he came over in the glass now trade. Um, he's already made 10 starts between 2022 and 2023. And in those starts, we were all very effective. Um, his K to walk ratio has been very impressive in those 10 starts. He's walking almost four to, or sorry, striking out four to one batters to walk four to one K to walk ratio. Um, he sets up hitters with that fastball, puts them away with the secondary pitches, both the secondary pitches. I'm sure you're going to see one of – I'm thinking more of the slider over the changeup. I think Tampa Bay prefers their pitchers to throw sliders, so I'm thinking we could probably see that slider usage go way up here in 2024 with Tampa Bay. Um, he comes with a little bit more of a higher price tag than Nick Pavetta just because he was a touted prospect in the L.A. system. Um, so he obviously would be a little bit more costly versus a Nick Pavetta. But – I think he's still something that you can get at a low cost compared to what he would be, let's say, in 2025 and beyond. Um, you know, even Joe saying he's excited for for uh, PPO right. this year too. So, so you know, and Joe's one of our top rankers. So if he's excited about him, I know I'm excited about him. He's definitely one of the players that you should be looking to acquire. Um, I wouldn't be throwing a ton at him just because the injury risk that they had with with um with with Tampa Bay and their pitchings, but I would look and be looking to acquire him for sure. I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't be throwing a ton at him, but he's someone that I'm saying that I'm planting my flag on this year and saying that just like last year, I planted it with Jeffrey Springs. I'm planting it with Ryan this year too. Yeah. I, I definitely like this. Um, you did bring up a uh, adage of mine is if the Rays trade for you like them, but also yep. an adage of mine is if the Dodgers get rid of you, <laughs> So it's very much like the Spider-Man meme. Oh, true. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Should I tr like which I, I guess in the end I would trust the Dodgers, but I am in on Ryan just because, again, 
this isn't going to like you, you can find him late in startup or redraft leagues and it's going to get you value. And that's really all you need to do. You don't need to win your league in the bottom 10 of your draft. You just need to find the value and that's how you win. the league. Mm-hmm. So for sure, definitely in on both of these guys. Yeah. With the adage of the Dodgers getting rid of them, the Dodgers were like, well, if we must, if we're going to acquire glass now, we're probably going to have to give up somebody. And so, yeah, you know, they were probably willing to deal away with. They probably didn't want to get rid of them, but yes, when you but can acquire yeah. glass now, yeah, it was, it was worth it. So before the show, we obviously picked out our players. Little did I know when we were picking our players that we would both be, our hitters would both be third basemen. <laughs> However, Royce Lewis. We'll mostly play a lot of shortstop too, because let's yeah. be honest, Carlos Correa is not going to stay healthy for 150 games. It's just not who he is anymore. So I put Royce Lewis as both third and short eligible because I'm pretty sure he is in a lot of leagues. Yes. Um, but he will be playing third for Minnesota. I also put down Josh Jung. I I have always been high on Josh Jung since being drafted, and he was going to go ahead and be, you know, make a huge impact for Texas in 2022. However, that was taken away from us with a broken wrist, I think, or, or something yeah. like that, some sort of broken arm or something like that, early in the 2022 spring training. 2022 was taken away from us. Come 2023, comes out. almost. If it wasn't for an, an amazing season from Gunnar Henderson, Josh Jung wins AL Rookie of the Year. He was right on his, right on his tail for Rookie of the Year. The only difference is, is Gunnar put up a little bit more in the power numbers and scored 100 runs. So that was probably the, the deciding factor between him and Josh Young. Josh Young was still the not nothing to nothing to uh, scoff at in 2023. Basically, it was one of the cornerstones of getting them, getting them to and winning the World Series was Josh Josh Young at third base for Texas. Um, and I could see, you know, he had 23 home runs last year. I could see him getting even closer up to 25 plus, maybe even right around that 30 number. Um, always has a great approach at the plate. Um, I'd like to see him be a little bit more patient. He was doing a lot of, you know, it's expected from a rookie, right? I mean, you're going to swing and miss a lot as a rookie. Um, but I think if you could just cut back down on a little bit of that, you know, be a little bit more patient and walk a little bit more and, and strike, strike out a little bit less, you can hit for even higher average. Um, and I think, you know, just building on what he did in 2023 and just building again with a whole year of experience under his belt, and only being, I think, like 25 right now, came from a, – he's a college bat. College bats always transition well into the major leagues. We've seen it time and time again. Um, I think he's definitely someone that you should be trying to acquire. Again, he might come in a little bit higher of a rate. Um, but he's someone that I'm excited for. I was excited for in 2023, 2022, and I'm even more excited for 2024. I think he's got a lot of capabilities coming for him. Yeah, I I have him in our league in in 30 Rock and that's a guy that his value now I'm not trading him at that. I'm I, I'm looking for like a haul just because I truly think that he's going to be like a top 5 third baseman in the next mm-hmm. 5 years like so I'm really excited about him now and and moving forward. That 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 Texas team, man. Just a juggernaut like Evan Carter. You've really got just so much really like that's what's – and you got – like being bad and then immediately winning the World Series and then you have all of these great young controllable bats like yeah. Wyatt Langford's coming. Like this this team's going to be good for a very long time. And they kudos to them for drafting so well. But I'm just Texas in general is going to be fun. I agree. Yeah. Um, so that brings it to me. Yeah, Royce Lewis. Royce, Royce, Royce Lewis, man. Before we um, before we get going, Joe actually has a question for you about your Royce Lewis pick here. Is Royce Lewis another Buxton for the Twins, oozing with talent but never stay healthy? Joe, do you want to <laughs> know what I have on my notes here? Do you know who I was obsessed with two years ago, Jason? Byron Buxton. <laughs> yep. So, again, I'm going to be saying words right now that do not matter. But if Royce Lewis – Played 162 games. <laughs> he would be hitting. Well, no. Yeah. He would hit 41 home runs and 145 RBI. <laughs> yeah. So these, no, I'm banking on the health. 
because the talent is there. The talent has been there for as long as I remember. It's just these injuries. But the injuries he's had, I don't, they don't scare me. <laughs> I understand it's I I think there's been a couple knees in there, but like I I'm gonna get hurt. I under I understand. Me and <laughs> Royce Lewis are going to get hurt here. I don't love his ADP. His ADP right now is within the top 50. And that wasn't like going into this. I was like, I'm looking for people outside of like top 75. So hand up on that. I thought, I thought he was going later in drafts, but he's someone you really need to just like, you're going to hold your breath. You're going to close your eyes and you're going to press it. it it's, it's like taking a shot of Malort. Is that, <laughs> right. Yeah. That's yeah. That's, yeah. That's the Chicago one, right? Yep. You're like, okay, like you close your eyes, you hold your nose, and you're just like, I'm just going to do it, and then my night's going to be great. Do this. Royce Lewis is my lord. That's all I'm going to say. He's going to – it might sting a, a, a few times, but once you get a couple down, you're good to go. You know, that that ADP is inflated right now because of that – that uh, the last two months of the season. I mean, that man was on fire. He, four grand slams. <laughs> four grand slams. He, the month of August and September, he had an OPS of a thousand or more. Um, he had eleven home runs in two months. Yeah, uh, was, four of them being grand slams. He was, I mean, if you picked him up late in drafts or late in uh, waivers last year, I mean, he may have even won you some championships just to just to that hat trick that he had in the month of uh, in 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 August and September. Yeah, he. And that's that obviously we're seeing it here with his ADP this year is rising up. I would be careful with that ADP just because of the small sample size. We have not seen him have a long track record at the major league level of this type of numbers. Um, so that would be the only question that I would have with Royce Lewis is be careful on the um, the ADP size because it, it, right it, it, his his buzz his name is becoming a buzz amongst uh, the drafters this year and yeah. it's all because of that. Everyone remembers looking back last year, the end of the season, and and the, the run that he went on. He was so good. It, like that was like it. It came to a point where like I'd be on Twitter and I'm like, oh, it's just a replay, and it was like, no, he hit a fucking another grand slam. <laughs> it was wild. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, the month of month of August, six hundred slugging, and the month of September, he had a six twelve slugging percentage in both those months. So, uh, that that was um, yeah, eleven home runs. And barely struck out at all either. So he was on fire the last two months of the season, creating his ADP to fly up now. All right, let's see here. Before we get into our prospects for this year, we actually have a question here from a from a viewer here. In an eight-man league this year, big money league, what would be your draft strategy and who would be a must-have for this year? Um, draft so, best players, Remy. Yeah, eight eight-man shallow league like that. That's few, crazy. A few things that I would call out. Sleep, let pitcher sleep. Get those big name bats at the top of the the first few rounds. Let those guys reach for Garrett Cole and Corbin Burns that we just spoke about. There's a. I feel like pitching, starting pitching is um pretty deep this year. We talked about it. I think it was last week or two weeks ago. Um, there's a really big blob of guys outside, like the, the starting pitchers from like let's say like rank eleven to rank like sixty. Are all in like almost that same tier. It's just a chunk. <laughs> if you want to grab, like, I'm not going to blame you for grabbing a guy like, let's say, like uh, in the third round of an eight man league, grab like one, like an ace, right? Just go with that one ace. But we've also seen strategies where Nick and TGFBI went, I don't think it took a starting pitcher till the 15th Tenth. round, 10th round. I think it, I, I think I went 10, so 11. I didn't pick one till 11. And still had a ton of success. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not sure he didn't say if it was Roto or category or points, yeah. but categories and Roto is pretty much the same. It's just a little bit different when you go head to head, but still the same concept. You're trying to you're trying to compile uh, five categories. But yes, in the shallower leagues, grab best player available and generally lean towards hitters. Um, Pitching is a lot easier to find later in the year too. Prospects get called up, mm -hmm. things like that. Pitching is way more easier to find as the year goes on, we're hitting is a little bit, get those studs at the beginning of the draft as hitters. Yeah. That would be my, that would be my call out for, I don't plan a ton of shallow leagues, but I just, my theoretically, it, it, I are, that's my strategy already. 
And when you're even getting, you have eight all star leagues that or teams. So fun. I mean, I think if you looked at an eight man roster, you'd be like, this is awesome. Yeah. I guess you could always limit that out by more starting positions, but like make the rosters deeper. But still, that, that, that'd be crazy. Imagine if it was like a thousand bucks a head and it's just like crazy roster. Eight man leagues. It, yeah. It would be just like a video that I want an eight league, an eight team league for gigantic amount of money just to have just for the thrill of it. <laughs> that'd be fun. All right. Let's get into our prospects here. Um, I did not tell you who mine was, but I knew you knew it. Nice. Yeah. Why don't you go first on your on your prospect? All right. This is I I I'm mentioned shocked. this this guy last week, and then I just wanted more of so I could I I actually looked up some stuff this this week to really hammer it home. But I'm picking a pitcher and I'm picking a Yankee pitcher. <laughs> so yeah. my guy Chase Hampton, man. I don't I don't know why I gravitated him to him this this off season. I I believe I said I I saw one tweet and then I like looked into him. I was like, oh, he's pretty he's pretty good, but he's you weren't far oh, off on the thousand dollar buy. Remy, Remy, I need you to like follow me on Twitter at nzanaboni ninety three and just go ahead and keep me updated on this. I would like to see your draft if if you have a group chat. Of just <laughs> all the owners, just just let me be like a ghost on that wall because those are the people that I want to hang out with. But anyway, back to Chase, Chase Hampton. Three above average pitches. One is elite. Slider is unbelievable. Has an actual fat fastball, and he. What's great about him is he knows where to put his fastball. And I feel young pitchers. That's kind of where the issue is is the placement of the pitches is kind of where they get screwed up. But the, he is someone that was a college arm, which, again, college arms and college bats translate very well to the MLB. <laughs> Crazy. And it's a quicker ROI. Um, the Yankees drafted him in the sixth round in the 2022 draft. He came out of Texas Tech. Um, last season, pitched over 100 innings, 3.6 ERA. FIP, which, I, which is – can, can you tell me what FIP is again? Fielder independent pitching. So it, it yes. kind of like if you took out like a lot of like the uh, the miscues or like yes, poor defense. of the fielding. Yep. Okay. So his FIP was three point three eight. So a decent amount down, almost half a half a point down. Um, he throws strikes, which again for a young pitcher is so important. <laughs> like when I when I play baseball as a kid or even through high high school coach would always just say just throw strikes and i never understood it until now where i'm looking at people and i'm like just throw a fucking strike <laughs> um limits the long ball another thing i love especially in that barn that is yankee stadium so i if i i'm not a prospect ranker that's not something that i can do but i'd put him in my top 50 in general like some some lists i'm sure he's not even in the top 100 but I truly believe in him, and I'm trying to tell everyone that this Red Sox fan who doesn't believe in pitching prospects <laughs> believes in this one Yankee pitching prospect. I'll get off my soapbox. I will boast about Chase Hampton later in the season. We'll just have like a cha uh, Chase Hampton like corner or something, and I'll wear a Yankee hat. Just kidding. I will never wear a Yankee hat. <laughs> I will say, man, that's that's a lot to ask to wear a Yankee hat. But uh, this is a good call. I think a few things with him. He actually was – um. He's uh they I think it was announced he's a non roster invitee. Yes, so he'll be in, it was it was announced. Him and yeah. Jones, I think it was a few. Yep, there was a few of them. So he'll be in spring training this year. He was a double A last year, which is always a huge testing yeah. ground for pitchers. Um, if you can succeed at double A, you you can pretty much almost always not always, but a lot of times you have the chance to skip triple A. Triple A is more for like you know, guys that can't make it in the majors. Um, but. Those are two good calls. And then the, the Juan Soto trade freed up a little bit more of a clear path to the majors for him because they the Yankees traded away Thorpe and King, right? Yep. Yeah. So a lot of their two top uh, pitching prospects are gone out of the way. So it gave, clears a road for Chase Hampton to, to probably make his debut at some point this season. I think probably, we'll see him. Yeah. I would assume maybe, you know, maybe later at the end of the year maybe for, force up a little bit if there's some injuries and stuff like that because the Yankees have um, a pretty solid starting rotation right now. 
But, you know, a couple injuries here or there, and maybe he finds his way into the, uh, the, the major leagues earlier than, earlier than later. I agree. Also, it's kind of funny, too, if we just talk about um, six-round draft picks, right? We're going to talk about Detroit's six-round draft pick uh, from a couple years ago, Justin Henry Malloy. Um, I feel like a lot of times these guys, like, they, you know, when you're a six-round pick, right, like nobody kind of, oh, this guy's like a highly tattered prospect. And then they go on and become good minor league compilers and kind of force their way up ranks and stuff like that. And I kind of feel like that's what's happening with Justin Henry Malloy. He's had really good success since being drafted. He had basically had his first full season at AAA last year um, after getting a little bit of taste of it in 2022. They let him play the full year in 2023 in AAA. He's on Detroit. He's, he's basically not blocked. Um he, last year, he had 23 home runs and 892 OPS. He's got a really good great – he's got a really good approach at the plate. He's never had a WRC plus below 100 in, in the minor leagues in his career. He's always had above 100. Gets on base at a high rate with that advanced approach at the plate. 400 OBP at every stop he's had in the minor leagues. Doesn't strike out a ton, but still above 20% for uh, most of his time in the minors. So I'd like to see a little bit of a cut down, but if you're walking – at a 10 to 15% rate, I'm okay with the strikeouts at 25% or 20%. I could deal with that, especially when you're getting on base from the walks. The power is there. Um, like I said, there's not a ton in his way to be blocked. Um, I think this is someone that you can get pretty cheap as well um, as a prospect. And I don't feel prospect. Now, obviously, there's a ton of good prospects, upper prospects ahead of him. But I just want to kind of try to spotlight some guys that you may not have heard of and that you may be able to, like, almost get, I wouldn't say free, because he's obviously been pretty good since being drafted, but doesn't have that shine of like a top 20 prospect. He's yeah, gonna- and let's not put this aside. He was drafted by the Braves, not by the by the Tigers. So pretty sure the Braves had a pretty good scouting and development program. So, But they also know when to not trade people, except for Von Grisham. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, when, when I thought you going to Detroit, what the hell were the Braves thinking? <laughs> Exactly. Um, Jason, we have a special episode next next week, right? I think hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. I don't want to I don't want to spoil the I don't want to spoil it yet. But. Um I do want to say next next Sunday is my nerf draft at Jake and Joe's in Waltham. Shout out Jake and Joe's. Shout out the salmon Caesar salad. The salmon seas. I'll uh I'll take a picture with it, post it, tag Let's you guys. It. Um Wait, this is next Friday, you said? No, a week from Sunday. So the 18th, I think it is. Wow. Nerf yeah. is that early? Yeah, man. I'm last last year it was um after TJ FBI. But yeah. This one, yeah. Well, I think we have a not to spoil too much, but we might have a special guest for Nerf recap too, right? Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not to, uh, not, I don't. Want, I don't want to get. I don't want to get the viewers' hopes up. But no, yeah. I'm gonna say between one and two, one and two guests from the from the nerd. Oh, okay. So we are gonna. We are. We will have guests. Maybe even yeah, two guests. So pro- hopefully, we have two guest shows within the next two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And then we need our monthly flow to come. Yeah. That's that's. Yeah, he's 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 a he's a family he's a family friend here on the channel, so he'll be around. All right, man. All right, Nick. Have a good one. See you next week, buddy. See ya.